everyone, it's Lou Collins. Today I'd like to make a card along with you and explain the process because this is a little bit different. Now I've got this beautiful, quite old stamp. I'm not even sure if it's still available. It's from Gina K Designs, but I love this floral. But I very rarely use it because I just, I, I'll be honest, I can't be bothered to colour it in. I am not um, a patient colourist. I like anything where you can add colour quickly. So I'm actually quite a fast crafter. If you feel like you're like me sometimes, or sometimes you just don't have the time to be colouring in your stamped images, then hopefully this card is going to be absolutely perfect for you. So grab a cup of tea and let's get on with the process. So the first thing I'd like to do is create a really nice background. I don't have the perfect pattern paper um, for what I want, so I'm going to create this using my Distress Oxides on my gel plate. So I'm just pressing the two colours in there. I have got Uncharted Mariner and Peacock Feathers, and I'm just going to brayer each of these. First I'm going to do the colours individually and spread them a little and then I'll do a little bit of mixing between the two. Not too much because I don't want these two to blend so much that they all become one colour. I'd still like to be able to see the two colours. There we go, happy with that. Then I'm going to do a spritz of water. So I'm going to flick water drops onto the surface there. Perfect. And then place my paper. And this is such a beautiful way of creating a background really, really quickly. So just letting that all soak up, lift up and look at that. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? Now, just quickly, while that's still damp, because the ink is going to dry quicker than the water, we can sprinkle gold embossing powder over this entire image here. And you'll see it's just stuck to certain parts. Now, if you do this too quickly, you'll find that the gold is going to stick everywhere. The best thing to do there is just give it 30 seconds and then tap some off. So from behind, flick some. After 30 seconds, if you still find there's too much on there, give it another 30 seconds, tap some off. Keep repeating this until you're happy with how much is on there. Now, while I've been talking, obviously this could have been drying more. When I then take my heat gun to it, that is just going to blow everything around. So I'm going to heat from underneath because at the moment I've got the gold pooling around where the damper areas are. So if I heat from underneath, this is going to melt them exactly where they are without blowing the embossing around at all. But it's also going to dry off my project at the same time. And once you've heated from underneath and you're sure everything is stuck, you can go over the top just to be sure. Now I've got that gold sparkle running through my beautiful background and I can trim this down to size. So looking at my stamp on this 5 by 7 inch card, that's going to fit absolutely perfectly. Um, I'll probably have it this way so the sunflower is at the top just like so. So the blue will be around the outside. So I need to trim this down to fit this first of all. Now for our stamp, you want to go on to a cardstock that's perfectly suitable for heat embossing onto. I've got a really thick cardstock here so I can raise the image up if I want to on foam without it bowing. I'm going to take Versamark, this is an embossing ink, and press that all over the surface of the stamp. I've not actually used this stamp before, so it's really nice and um, sticky on here. Hopefully that will transfer beautifully. You're not going to see the stamp as soon as I stamp it until I start heat embossing because it's a clear ink. Sticking with the same glittery embossing powder as I used for my background. Again, I'm just going to give this a little flick. Now, I really wasn't thrilled with how the uh, glittery embossing powder was holding onto the detail. I kind of lost quite a bit of detail as I was heating it up. So I decided to uh, re-ink my stamp stamp that again with clear embossing and this time I'm going with a uh, embossing powder from Ranger that's princess gold. It's not glittery like the background, it will still be gold, but I know this is going to have a lot more detail showing through. So there's all the detail, much much better. Now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut this image out. Now a lot of stamped images will have outline dies so you don't need to worry about this step with your scissors because it is time consuming. Some people find it really therapeutic and enjoy doing it like me. I don't have a lot of patience. 
I really wish I had the outline die for this particular stamp, but I didn't. So this was my only option. Um, obviously, I could have gone really roughly around the edges, but I decided to get the best possible look. I was going to go right into all the detail. The scissors that I am using are Fiskars embroidery scissors. I've used these for years. They're by far for me the most perfect fussy cutting scissors because the end is a really good point. They're very, very sharp and they're just the right size. I can get some good straight lines with them if I need to, but I can also get into all the smaller details too. So I'm cutting just outside of the embossed line and going into the detail in this bouquet of flowers as far as I reasonably can. So I can place this on here completely flat if I want to or I can raise it up with foam pads. Now I want the look of dimension but I don't really want to go with foam pads because I want to pop it flat in an envelope, keep postage as low as possible. So what I'm going to do is take a dark ink, this one is black soot and the oxides and I'm just going to go around roughly where the stamp's going to be and you can keep referring back to your stamp to just make sure that you're getting the right areas. And as you can see with this, you can still see the design through. So we're just going to be darkening the edges underneath where the stamp's going to be, just a little bit. That's just about perfect. So now I can glue this down. So now we've got our stamped image with a beautiful background and it looks like it's fixed in because we've got that shading around the edge. Now to finish this off, I'm just going to put a sentiment across the centre here, sending you the biggest hug. This comes from my Textures Sentiments for All paper pack. So there's that beautiful gold floral stamp set into a really pretty background that includes gold in it as well. You can see that sparkling away in the background there. So hopefully you've learned something new to take away and try out from this tutorial. Now of course there's lots more tutorials on my channel as well. You'll find them all based around card making just here and if you enjoy this video I'd love it if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already just here. Thank you everybody for joining me. Take care. I'll see you again very soon.